There's drones all around you. <laughs> Watch out, it's swooping. It's swooping. <laughs> or oh, freeze it. Hey, welcome to Ask an Expert. I'm David Roberts. We take questions from Twitter and hopefully answer them. Bird. Hey, here we go. All right. Here we have a question from J-Man Castro. How far are we from solar powered with the energy efficiency to fly indefinitely? Imagine the possibilities. Probably solar powered drones. So, uh, well, we have already had solar powered drones. Uh, DARPA did a project a few years ago and had a drone that stayed up long enough that they got bored and after a couple weeks brought it down. But I know too, there are some uh, really interesting projects. Boeing got funded by DARPA to do a solar powered drone that stays above 50,000 feet. So that's above all the clouds for five years. And the real issue has been having a battery so that when the sun goes down, you can still keep operating while the sun's down. Um, but the cloud cover has never really been an issue. Okay. Here we go. Oh. Thank you, Bird. All right, this is from Andre B. Swast. Will drones take over the job of insurance surveyors? What would be the real life application? Great question, Andre. Uh, drones, I think, are definitely already being used to inspect things, and that includes surveying. But, you know, the idea really behind a drone the way we think of it today is a hovering vehicle that is carrying a camera anywhere in three-dimensional space where there's air. And what that means is that you can now inspect bridges and dams and roads and high power lines and do all of that very efficiently while before you used to have to dangle, in fact you still do, have to dangle people off of bridges in ropes, risking their life and taking a lot of time and effort and energy. Today you can actually do the job that those surveyors do, say on the Bay Bridge, which Halo Drop did I think a few months ago, in a single two hour period, what normally takes a group of people an entire week. For my phone. Oh. Hey, here we go. Another one. Thank you, Mr. Bird. Wade Needham asks the question, could drones be used to facilitate tourism in eco-sensitive areas, creating minimal footprints? Great question, Wade. What I like about that, Wade, is that most of the drones are almost all electric. So there'd be no fuel emissions in those areas. What I probably think will be challenging, though, is that drones today are kind of noisy. And so what you'd have to do is actually fly a typical one of the smaller drones above about 150 feet, and then you don't hear them. And then that would be a minimal noise impact. But I think it'd be very likely that we'll see drones being used. We're flying through things like the Grand Canyon, and you'll be able to get online and actually view that, maybe even with an Oculus Rift helmet or other 3D imager, and get that full experience without actually going there. Uh, there are already drones that are, uh, look and fly exactly like hummingbirds, and a uh, wonderful project by Aero Environment, and you can watch that online with a small hummingbird-like drone flying around with a camera on it, inside, coming outside. And then the real challenge is that they don't fly for very long, but really an amazing technology. Oh, hey, I hear a bird. Oh, here we go. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Got gotcha, you, little guy. Thank you. All right, this is from Steve Budd. Will delivery drones leave those damned missed delivery drone notices on my door like UPS? That is a great question. Um, it's going to be interesting how delivery drones work. If you looked at the patents that Amazon filed, those patents say that the delivery drones will actually follow you around. So if you're not at home, they're going to know where you are through a whole set of means. One of them might just be the fact that you're carrying your cell phone on you. And they will go out and find you and deliver your package there. So maybe no notes. Hey, thanks for watching. This is Ask an Expert. I'm David Roberts. Please subscribe and next week we'll have a new topic.